Hey nerds, Gleemax here. Today we're looking at the top 10 blue, black, red, or Grixis commanders. Grixis is a color combination that offers a large variety in deck archetypes. We'll go over what I believe are the best commanders and take a look at the decks they would lead. Let's begin. At number 10 we have Mishra, Artificer Prodigy. Mishra is a 4-4 human artificer for one blue, black, red. Whenever you play an artifact spell, you may search your graveyard and or library for a card with the same name as that spell and put that card onto the battlefield. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. So at first glance, Mishra's ability seems useless in Commander. As it's a singleton format, searching for additional copies of the same card doesn't make sense, but it's not totally useless. Say we're going to cast an artifact creature spell, Baleful Strix. When we cast it, Mishra's ability goes on the stack. If our Strix is then countered by, say, Counterspell, before Mishra's ability resolves, it will go into the graveyard. Mishra's ability will resolve and put that Baleful Strix onto the battlefield. This is more than simple Counterspell protection though. Let's look at the best card in the deck. Blood Funnel. When in a black and our non-creature spells cost 2 less. The downside is we have to sacrifice a creature each time we cast a non-creature spell, or that spell is countered. With Mishra out, you don't care if your sad robot gets countered. There's also Nether Void, which makes everything each player casts cost 3 more or gets countered. With Mishra out, this is pure benefit for you. Too bad the card is so expensive. A much cheaper alternative is Nullstone Gargoyle. It flat out counters the first non-creature spell cast each turn. It only affects the first one, so you have to be careful there. From here, Mishra is an artifact-focused control deck. Trying to win with Bloodsteel Colossus or Hellkite Tyrant, while keeping your opponent on the back foot with counter magic, removal effects like Terminate. The ready Strat Savant and Tezzeret can safely tick up and eventually ultimate, while Mishra sits back and lets its unique style of control play out. Mishra is a surprisingly fun number 10. At number 9 we have Croesus the Perjurer. Croesus is a 6-6 dragon with flying for 3 blue, black, red. Whenever Croesus the Perjurer deals combat damage to a player, you may pay 2 in a black. If you do, choose a color, then that player reveals his or her hand. They discard all cards of the chosen color. Alright, discard. This won't endear you to anyone at the table, but the synergies are there. Both Megram and Liliana's Caress shock our opponents whenever they discard a card. Raider's Wake does the same but it also has a raid trigger that provides a targeted discard effect as well. One of the most interesting pieces in the deck is Waste Knot, giving us a 2-2 zombie if our opponent discards a creature, 2 black mana if they discard a land, and a card draw for any non-creature, non-land cards. I really like Gath Grimoire in this deck, triggering for each card discarded. This artifact ensures your hand is always full. Process isn't the only way we can make our opponents discard cards. We get to run a lot of specters as well. Hypnotic Spectre, or Hippie, is a 2-2 flyer that forces a random discard whenever it hits. Well, Spectre is another Megram effect on a body that forces a discard when it enters the battlefield. Sidrax's Spectre has super metal artwork with the simplest form of the ability, as does Blazing Spectre. The best is probably Scythe Spectre, forcing each opponent to discard when it deals combat damage and burning our opponents as well. One of the downside to discard deck is when your opponents run out of cards and you have to be able to finish the game. For this reason, we run Shrieking Affliction, which burns 4 or 3 at the beginning of their upkeep if they have 1 or fewer cards in hand, and Painful Quandary, which forces a discard whenever they cast a spell, and burns them for 5 whenever they can. Croesus lends itself to a strong, highly synergistic playstyle, and he's number 9. At number 8, we have Nicol Bolas, a 7-7 Elder Dragon with flying for 2 blue blue, black black, red red. At the beginning of your upkeep, you sacrifice Nicol Bolas unless you pay blue black red. Whenever Nicol Bolas deals damage to an opponent, that player discards his or her hand. Ah yes, the main antagonist of the Jastis League. Sorry Maro. Bolas is one of the OG Elder Dragons and is run in Bolas Tribal. There are 5-ish Bolas Planeswalkers. Most have a plus and minus ability to destroy creatures or force discard, with an ultimate ability that you 
usually reads you win the game. Quite literally so with Nicol Bolas Dragon God. Nicol Bolas the Ravager is a legendary creature that flips into a walker. Honestly, between OG Bolas and his Ravager counterpart, run whichever you prefer as your commander as they're both good. You run Cruel Ultimatum not only because it features Bolas in the artwork, but it's literally just a slightly nerfed ultimate of Nicol Bolas Planeswalker. Dark Imitations imitates Cruel Ultimatum like Divination imitates Ancestral Recall. It's really overcosted at 5 CMC, but the interaction with your Bolas Planeswalkers is cute. I don't usually recommend flavor or lore based decks, but Bolas is a fan favorite villain. He's a solid number 8. For 7 we have Thraxamundar. Thraxamundar is a 6-6 hasty zombie assassin for 4 blue, black, red. Whenever Thraxamundar attack, defending player sacrifices a creature. Whenever a player sacrifices a creature, you may put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Thraxamundar. Thrax recently got a secret layer with this art. It's super metal. Thraxamundar is a sacrifice commander. We gain access to the typical Fleshbag Marauder, Plague Crafter, and Merciless Executioner cards, but we also the new demons to cycle as well. Each creature forces a sacrifice from each player at the table. We ramp up the sacrifices with Dictate of Arrows and Grave Pack, and since we're in blue, we get the highly underrated Ruthless Death Fang. All of these force opponents to sacrifice their creatures whenever one of our things dies. Red allows us to further weaponize the sacrifices. Mayhem Devil lets us ping anything for one damage whenever any player sacrifices anything. Deathbringer Thopter has a roundabout way of doing the same, gaining a plus one plus one counter whenever a creature dies and removing those counters to throw damage around. I'm actually building this deck on paper. I found this while researching. Din of the Fire Herd, an 8 mana spell for a 5-5 five five token. Target opponent sacrifices a creature for each black creature you control and a land for each red creature you control. The art is metal as heck, and if you have any decent board size when you play this, you can just send one opponent to the Shadow Realm. Lastly, a pet card, Unsythe, Killer of King. One blue, two black, and a red for a legendary artifact equipment that equips for two generic mana. It gives a creature plus three plus three. If the equipped creature destroys an opponent's creature, it gets exiled and you get a 2-2 two -two zombie token. It's not great, but come on, you raise your opponent's creatures into a zombie after killing them too hard. What's not to love. Thraxamundar is a super metal commander and is my number 7. At number 6 we have Cedrus, the Traitor King, a 5-5 zombie warrior for 3 blue, black, red. Each creature in your graveyard has Unearth for 2 and a black. Unearth is pay 2 and a black, return the card from the graveyard to the battlefield, the creature gains haste, and it gets exiled at the end of turn or if it would leave play for any reason. You may only unearth as a sorcery. Alright, Reanimator. Grixis gives us very good options for reanimator. First you fill up your graveyard and Tomb grabs anything from your deck and tosses it in the yard, as does Buried Alive which can grab up to three things. Corpse Coin Assurer in Tombs when it enters the battlefield. Gravebreaker Lamia does as well. Note the discount Gravebreaker Lamia provides does not discount Unearth because Unearth is an ability not an alternate casting cost. We then reanimate the creatures we put into the graveyard. Reanimate itself only costs one mana and some life. Animate Dead is very wordy, but it just brings a creature back from the graveyard to the battlefield with negative one power. And of course, Cedrus himself gives everything on Earth. One card that benefits greatly from Unearth is Flayer of the Hatebound, letting each creature that enters the battlefield from the graveyard burn anything equal to that creature's power. This means when we unearth Massacre Worm, we can add an additional six burn damage to whatever survives its enter the battlefield trigger. In fact, this effect is so good with Cedrus, we run both Warstorm Surge and Terror of the Peaks for redundancy. You can even unearth the Terror of the Peaks. The probable best card in the deck is Sundial of the Infinite, allowing you to pay 1 mana and end the turn. Due to the wording on Unearth, if you end the turn before the Unearth trigger resolves, but while it's on the stack, you get to keep the creature. Meaning, Sundial turns Cedrus ability into pay 2 and a black, reanimate a creature. Cedrus is a fun commander, 
he's my number six. At number five, we have Admiral Beckett Brass. Admiral Brass is a 3-3 human pirate for one blue, black, red. She gives other pirates you control plus one plus one. At the beginning of your end step, you gain control of target non-land permanent controlled by a player who is dealt damage by at least three or more pirates that turn. Pirates is a tribe that has recently received a lot of support, unlike the strictly cooler ninja tribe. Brass is played mostly for her lord ability and to play the three relevant pirate colors. Brass isn't your only lord though. Dire Fleet Neckbreaker gives all pirates a strong plus two plus O. Oh. Corsair Captain gives the standard plus one plus one as well as a treasure token. And Captain Vargas Wrath gives a varying buff based on how many times you cast back at Brass this game. Merchant Raiders locks down one creature whenever it or another pirate enters the battlefield, letting you tie down the biggest threats on the table. Commander Legends also gave us Hull Breacher, a 3-2-4-3 with Flash. Whenever an opponent tries to draw a card when it's not their draw step, they don't draw the card, but you get a treasure. Also from Commander Legends is probably the best pirate, which is Port Razor, which gives additional combat steps whenever it hits a player, but it can only attack each opponent once. Honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of the pirate theme, but the deck is aggressive and fun, so pirates gets a number 5 spot. At number 4, we have Marchesa the Black Rose. Marchesa is a 3-3 human wizard for 1 blue, black, red. She has Dethrone. Dethrone means whenever this creature attacks the player with the most life, or tied with the most life, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. She also gives all other creatures you control Dethrone as well. Whenever a creature you control with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it dies, return that card to the battlefield under your control at the beginning of the next end step. The idea here is to steal your opponent's things give them a plus one plus one counter with Marchesa's Dethrone or another ability, and then sacrifice them. Doing so will bring them back to the battlefield under your control permanently. To accomplish this, we run a lot of active treasons effect. These temporarily steal a creature, untap it, and give it haste. Mark of Mutiny is the best version of the effect as it gives the creature a plus one plus one counter by itself. Active Aggression is an instant speed active treason that costs four life most of the time. Mass Mutiny steals one thing per opponent, and Captivating Crew has a repeatable act of treason effect for 4 mana on a decent 4-3 body. We don't rely solely on Marchesa to give our hard-earned stolen creatures plus 1 plus 1 counters. Unspeakable Symbol can put counters on anything at instant speed for only 3 life, but our options are limited in this color combination, so Dragon Blood is a consideration if you're desperate enough for the effect. For synergy with plus 1 plus 1 counters, Herald of Secret Stream can make your attackers unblockable. If they get a plus one plus one counter from Dethrone when they attack, they'll gain the unblockability from Herald prior to blockers being declared. The same is true for Menace with Skyclave Shadowcat. Marchesa is a very interesting commander. Not one I'd build myself, but the limitations in the color combination and effects makes it great for brewers. Marchesa is number four. At number 3 we have Necrosar as a Mind Razor, a 2-4 zombie wizard for 2 black red. At the beginning of each player's draw step, they draw an additional card. Whenever an opponent draws a card, Necrosar the Mind Razor deals 1 damage to that player. Strong, consistent, and kind of cliche, Necrosar is the wheel commander in Grix. Wheels are cards like Wheel of Fortune that force everyone to discard their hand and then draw a number of cards. We also run Windfall, Magus of the Wheel, Dark and Molten Psyche to have multiple of these effects. Black also gives us ways to further punish our opponents for card draw. Underworld Dreams, Fate Unraveler, and Spiteful Visions do 1 damage per card drawn. We also get access to Megrim and Liliana's Caress and Fell Spectre to hurt our opponents for drawing the cards as well. Blue is great for howling mine effects like Dictative Perfect, Kami of the Crescent Moon, letting Necrosar deal increasing damage over time. Blue also gives us Prosperity effects, which with Necrosar out is basically pay X in a blue, deal X damage to each opponent. Your main nuke spell is Peer into the Abyss, which makes your opponent draw half their deck and lose half their life. With Necrosar, this is almost always single target player removal. Most play groups will have a wheel deck. The archetype is spread into several other combinations, and the effects are strong and change up the game each time. Necrosar is very linear, but he's good. He's number 3. 
At number 2, we have Kess Dissident Mage, a 3-4 flying human wizard for 1 blue, black, red. During each of your turns, you may cast an instant or sorcery from your graveyard. If a card is cast this way, it gets exiled instead of going to the graveyard. Wow, Kess is a powerhouse and makes for a high powered spell slinger commander. Spell slinger is one of those few archetypes that actively run cantrips. Whether it be brainstorm or opt or ponder, these cards smooth out your draws and let you hold up reactionary removal spells like Dread Boar or Counterspell. Faithless Looting is banned in Modern and for good reason. The Draw 2, Discard 2 lets it stock our graveyard and provides excellent card selection. Frantic Search costs 3 but does the same thing and lets you untap 3 lands and cast more things at instant speed. The payoffs for casting instants and sorceries can be massive. I like Gutter Snipe which can deal massive damage if it's allowed to stick around for a few Turn. Tolerant the Sky Summoner and Murmuring Mystic give flying tokens whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell. Young Pyromancer makes tokens as well, but they can't fly. Winning with Kess is usually done with Storm Effects. Aether Flux Reservoir lets us gain life for each spell we cast. With enough casts in one turn, we can turn this into 50 damage to completely blow someone out of the game. I also like Thousand Year Storm, which effectively gives each spell you cast the Storm of Ability, letting you close out the game with 11 lightning bolt copies targeting each of your opponents. Kess is good, really good. Her ability is simple, but powerful. She's my number two. And at number one, we have Obeka, Brute Chronologist, a 3-4 Ogre Wizard for one blue, black, red. You may tap Obeka, and the player whose turn it is may end the turn. Ending the turn means you exile all spells and abilities that are currently on the stack. The player whose turn it is discards down to their maximum hand size, damage wears off, and effects that say this turn or until end of turn end. That's right, Sundial of the Infinite in the Command Zone. Obeka best synergizes with Rian animate or copy effects that last until end of turn, like Flame Shadow Conjuring or Dawn of the Dead. Obeka allows you to end the turn with these effects on the stack and keep the creatures. So we get to run Sneak Attack and effectively turn the cost for all of the big creatures in our hand into a single red mana. You run a lot of Entomb and Buried Alive effects in this deck as well, finding huge creature like It That Betrays Massacre Worm to dump into the bin, you then bring them back utilizing Felden of the Third Path or Apprentice Necromancer. Once the triggers are on the stack at end of turn, you get to simply end the turn and keep whatever you brought back permanently. Of course, there's also the Final Fortune effects, which are extra turn effects in red. These are usually super cheap mana-wise. The idea here is to pay a low cost, take an extra turn when the Lose the Game triggers on the stack. You simply end the turn. The effect does not resolve and you get a time walk for Red Red. I understand that Obeka being number one when it was released shortly before the creation of this video may seem like a disservice to the other cards on the list. However, each other Grixis commander that I've gone through is strong, lends itself to a unique playstyle or archetype, but I truly believe Obeka is the best Grixis commander. Well nerds, that's it for today. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know down in the comments which Grixis Commander is your personal favorite and what three color combination should I review next. Thanks nerds.